I'm going to keep on rolling, right? Uh, so we've got uh, we've got setup. So basically, my little note to myself is: so a cat, so a cat's hit a bait. Now what, right? Now, now what are we going to do? So is what we're going to do is we're going to assess the type of cat, male or female. We're going to assess the trophy, and we're going to decide as soon as possible, hopefully right there, because today we've got all these electronics on the truck. I've got all these things. My trackers know, I know. We're going to assess if we're going to hunt that cat right then and there. If it's a female, we're going to continue baiting because the ma male and female territories overlap, right? So it's a, it, it's just the way it is. So if there's a female on bait, I'm going to keep feeding. If it's a young male, I'm going to make a decision on some stuff. But if it's a shooter cat, then it, it's it's time it, it's time to start working towards hunting that individual cat. Um, a lot of this has to do with time frame, um, meaning that you know if we find him early in the hunt, obviously that's great. If we find him late in the hunt, I may have to ex expedite some things. But the the thing is, is don't get in a hurry here and don't screw this up. At this point, you have a cat that is feeding on the, he's feeding at the bait you put there, right? So, and it's the right cat. So, um, don't get in a hurry. Um, I mean, persistence kills, persistence kills these cats, uh, these cats. So, now, I, I can't go into every scenario that may or may not happen uh, as far as timing. But basically, what's going to happen when you have a cat on the bait and we know it's the right cat for us? First thing, we're going to handle the meat situation, right? We're going to replenish that bait. We're already there, right? We're already there. We probably bumped that cat off. He was probably sitting in the ditch listening to everything we do. So I have a lot of very strict rules on the truck. I have a lot of procedural things that are done every time. But that cat is probably close by. We're going to handle the meat, and I'm going to get enough meat up there hung correctly that I can let some things play out. I'm going to check the camera. I'm going to replace the batteries. I'm probably going to hang a second camera. The second camera is to get movement. I hang one down and hang one low. I want to know how much time he's spending around the bottom of the tree. I want to know what times he's feeding. I'm starting to pattern this cat because I'm not going to sleep in a blind. I mean, I used to do that and it's stupid. It's, it's a bad idea. It, 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 it screws everything up. I, I, I'm going to start pattering this cat because I'm going to kill him the first or second time we sit there. Anyway, so now, where was I? I got a little excited on sleeping in the blind. I had to do it so many times it pisses me off. Um, all right, we want to be quick and thorough on all this stuff and quiet and effective. Um, basically, we're going to, my team's going to be doing different stuff. One guy's going to be up in the tree adjusting all this. I'm going to be running the electronics. Um, my other guys are, are going to be getting whatever, getting meat out of the truck, all these kind of things. Now, at this time, I, I'm going to, I'm going to send the vehicle. I'm going to send the vehicle probably away. I may go with it. I may not. It depends on how much time I have. I'm going to send that vehicle away from the baiting site, right? And I'm going to send it back the way we came. And as fast as possible, they're going to cut material to build the front of the blind. At a minimum, I want the front of the blind set up, right? So that goes on to the, uh, the, the question about setup that Nathan had. Generally, our blinds are between 60 and 80 yards, right? That any closer than 60 yards, you're kind of getting in that cat's personal space in a big way. Any longer than 80 yards, it's hard to assess some things that may or may not happen when you're hunting. So 60 to 80 yards. Um, so we're going to put the front of that blind up. Um, if we can build the whole thing, we're going to build it. Once again, it depends on time. If I'm approaching 5 or 6 o'clock and that sun's starting to get low, Man, I'm tying grass to the front, and I'm getting the hell out of there. Why? Because that cat wants to jump back in that tree, right? He's coming to that tree. Or maybe I got information on the trail camera that tells me that he feeds at 530. 
I want to be out of it. I want to be out of there because 530 is a great time for him to be feeding. I don't, don't get in a hurry. Don't sit there and build a blind over his natural feeding time and bump him off and change his pattern. Relax. Throw up the front of the blind, back out. Come back in the morning, build the rest, back out again. Once again, I'm setting a pattern and I'm using that cat's habits against him. I know his habits because I took the time to set up this situation where I can where I can see the habits as, as, as it's progressing. Um, all right, so then the there's a lot of stuff about how I use the vehicle and a lot of stuff about how to go in and out of a blind. Um, I, I'm going to skip that whole section. Um, I'm going to skip that whole section. Just uh, the let's say the blind is set up. Let's say everything's. In, I'm going to put all the equipment in the blind, which is the chairs, uh, which is a specialized shooting rest, which is the clients. Uh, anything you know that we're going to need equipment wise. Um, what I've done there is. The stage is set. All we need to do is enter into that blind and we can start hunting. So everything gets put there. Everything gets left there. Um, not the gun. We don't leave the gun. Um, all right. So then what we do is we back out of there. We back out of the area. We are not going to hunt that day. May not even hunt tomorrow. It just depends on time. But I'm going to back out of that area. I'm not going to do any drag. The reason the, the reason I'm not going to do any drags is it's the right cat. I don't want a lion there. I don't want more hyenas there. I don't want, I, I don't want anything to happen except for that cat to eat that piece of meat and go sleep down by that bush and then jump in the tree when I'm sitting in the blind. So we don't do any drags at this point. No more at that bait. Um, all right. So now what we're going to do, we're going to exit the area. The next goal. The next goal is to set up the client's gun at the exact distance from that bait to that piece of meat. I set up the exact, exact circumstance. I like a 375. We're talking about equipment now, right? So equipment is basically, you know, you got to have a, what? You need quiet and very comfortable chairs. Being comfortable is important. Being quiet is important. You need the right shooting stick with a rest. Lots of techniques, lots of different things for different pHs. You got to have a firm dead rest. You're going to need your binos, radios, all that crap. All right, so the gun here. We're, we're going to test fire that gun at the exact distance with the exact load. I have special loads that I like for Leopard. I recommend them whatever uh, i mean my clients will probably bring it we use those the we shoot that gun and that does two things that client has now fired the gun at the exact range that's a big mental step right we zero it and i mean zero it at 62 and a half yards right why not the bait 62 and a half yards away I want the client to have the utmost confidence in his piece of equipment. So we're hitting a bullseye at 62 yards. Now, the second thing that does, that lets me know that everything's tight. Everything's tight. And we are not going to shoot that gun again until we go and kill this leopard. Right? All the bugs are worked out of the system. The guy, my, my hunter's mind is right. Everybody knows that he can shoot a a flea off a dog's back at 62 yards. So anyway, that's very, very important. I do it before every single hunt, right? Um, all right, now, what are we going to do next? Well, th then it boils down to timing, right? It, it boils down to the, uh, I've skipped into the hunting phase of it, but uh, it boils down to timing. We may have to, you know, we may come back the next morning, have to finish the blind if we did the night before, whatever. But now the scene is set. Our goal now is to check all the other baits and keep them going because a plan B and a plan C are great, great problems to have when it comes to cat hunting. 
once I get up to four or five male leopard feeding at one time, I, I, I stop. I stop looking for male leopard, right? I start consolidating bait. That, that that's enough. That's enough leopard, right? Um, so now we're just trying to hunt that one cat, but it's still important that we check our baits every day. Um, I don't sleep in the blind. I don't do marathon 24 hour sits. I don't take off my shoes and sneak into the back of the blind like I've seen some of my compadres do on film. I don't, I don't do a lot of stuff. What I do do is I go in there at the right time in the right way and I plan to kill that cat on the first or second hunt. And I don't rush it. I do not get in a hurry. Um, so then that is that that's kind of the hunting phase. The the next and last section is how how the shot's gonna go down. So if the how the shot's gonna go down and some blind etiquette and how I plan out the actual killing, which is a very short section. So uh, Mark, we got any questions? Uh, we got any questions on on that last one of, of the setup? Yeah, there's a there's a quota question. If you want that one now from Bob Wheeler, uh, late on. What kind of quota question you got? Well, Nathan, I just thought you might uh, with the concessions that you have right now. What is your total quota uh, for Tanzania in a typical year, and how many leopards do you normally take out of that quota? And kind of a second follow-up question to that is how do you differentiate you do it with however many leopards you have on quota with a pH or an outfitter in another country that has one leopard on quota for the entire year? Okay, I don't understand the last one probably because I was thinking about the first question, but basically as a general rule on quota, you're going to get four per area it is a good offtake for most ecosystems in Tanzania. Four leopard on quota. I like to take three of the four, typically in a year. Um, depending on the year and depending on a lot of intercompany variables, um, we typically hunt somewhere between five and ten leopard a year. Uh, is is what I've done over the past well, past eight, seven, eight years. Okay. Uh, so for, for me, it's normal. For, for me, it's very normal to six, seven, eight, to kill six, seven, eight leopard in a year is, is that, that's, that's good. That's what I like to do. Okay. All right. So what was the second, what was the second part? I didn't understand that one. The second part of the question kind of leads up to the, the outfitter that may only have one leopard on quota for the year but who is out there and maybe selling, say, that leopard three times in the course of the year, comparing that to what you are doing. I think you kind of see where I'm going with this anyway. Uh, yeah, so, so you, you can't compare them, right? You I understand. Can't compare them. Well, what, you're doing with, uh, what you're doing with an outfit like that is it's a gamble, um, and you'll see that people that have hunted four or five, six times for leopard, they have gambled four or five, six times. And then we're starting to play favorites. Like, I like Bob better than I like Art, and Bob's going to shoot the leopard, but I sold it to Art and Adam and, and Dave. I, I mean, this, you know, no, we have the quota. I sell you a leopard hunt, and I bust. We do our damnedest to get you a leopard, period. But we also have, we have, my career has been, my career has been driven around cat hunting. That's what I like to do. That's so one thing leads to another in a natural way. I, I didn't just pay a bunch of money and do this, right? It's it just it naturally happened and we got good areas, we got good cat areas, I sold more leopard, we it just builds on itself. But no, I, I don't sell a cat unless I have the quota. And I don't sell a cat unless I'm planning to kill a cat. All right, Nate, there's another one from Jeffrey about the 375 load. Okay, 375 load. Jeffrey, where are you at, Jeffrey? All right, gotcha. Um, basically, 
375 load, a 375 H&H is the most versatile caliber for Africa. I recommend that on every dangerous game hunt, there is one on the vehicle because it can do a lot of stuff. I like, if a client has a 375 and that's what he's gonna shoot his leopard with, which I do prefer, um, he's gonna bring three types of bullets. He's gonna bring swift A-frame. He's gonna bring barns solids or a typical or a similar barn solids. Those will be 300 grain. He's gonna bring a leopard load that is a 260 grain Nosler Acubon bullet. It's loaded at 2,900 feet per second. It kills the absolute shit out of a leopard. It's like a hand grenade going off. It's like a super duper 300 wind mag. Sounds wonderful. Yes, it, it, it's, taken me, uh, it's taken me years of thinking, uh, years of jacking around and seeing bad things happen. Right, a good bullet, a good bullet for Africa does not perform well on a thin skin light boned animal you want you basically want a crappy bullet is what you want and that bigger 375 hits all the criteria that's what i what like think to about use. older round nose designs uh, don't know there's so many of them there's yeah. so many of them it'd be hard for me to say right I, I mean like hornady round noses are so crappy they'd probably work just fine right i mean they, they fall apart yeah. yeah, they fall apart in the gun. I mean, they probably work <laughs> great on a leopard. So, yeah. you know, it just depends on what you want to what you want to go with. Gotcha. Um, and if Hornady would sponsor me and give me some money, I wouldn't say stuff like that on film <laughs> about their bullet. Uh, but anyway, all right. Uh, what, what else we got? W one more question before I move on to the blind situation, which well, is kind I, of. I, a, I got a question, Nathan. So on this load, what if you don't reload? I, I got a guy that can do it for you. Professional oh, well, we can find guys that can do it. I always ask him the question. So you really don't want us to shoot a factory load at a cat? No, Even though they, they load a factory Acubon. Uh, we'll do it. Uh, the people that have loaded them for me in the past were double tap ammunition. Very yep. reliable, very professional. They, they advertise that load. Um, it, so. Oh, so you can buy it from, from double tap as their standard load? Yeah, yeah, it, it's not, it's kind of a special thing, but yes, I, I, I've bought all the, all the ones that I've purchased have all been from Double Tap, yes sir. Okay, that answered my question, because I've bought Double Tap before. Yeah, no, they're, they're good, very precious. I, I prefer factory type ammunition because hand loads can be hand loads sometimes, I like. I mean, there's good hand loaders and there's hand loaders that would be like me, right? I, 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 some, you know, we need it to go bang, we need the thing uh, to go bang. I, now, I hand load, but I only use factory loads on my hunts. And that's, that's because that's, I've had that bad primer. That's exactly right. Or that's bad load. Exactly right. So I, I, I've yeah. used that's, I, that was my, really my question. So, yes, so you'll double tap, look, make your load for you. Yes. Yep. Okay. And, and then I think even there's a couple companies that load at factory a little bit less feet per second. Still going to do the trick. That bullet expands quick. That's yeah, the only sure. ballistic tip bullet that I care anything about in, in personally. But anyway. You think so, it's an Acubon at like 2,900 feet a second? 260 grain Acubon pushing 2.9 is what it says on the box. Um, I should have I should have pulled out a box of that. Um, yeah. You can do it next week in the gear review. What's that? You can do it next week in the gear review. Yeah. Yeah, I could do it then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The, the, these, uh, all right, so now, all right, so now we're going on to the hunting, right? Now, we've got the right cat, we've got the right setup, we've timed him, the gun is perfect, the, everybody's mind is right, we have our approach, I have talked to my team, they know what we're going to do, the trackers are on board, everybody's on board, we try not to drink too much and we go to bed early because we're fixing to go hunt this cat in the morning, right? Now, in the blind, communication and a little bit of blind etiquette, blind uh, procedure, and that'll depend on your PA. This is what I do. We don't say anything in a blind. We don't, I actually, I take it back. I, I'm the only person that can say anything in a blind. Everybody else is really, really quiet, right? Um, we sit down, we have a way that we walk in, um, I get the client in the seat. I put the gun out the, the hole. I lock it in place. I load that gun. 
I take that gun off safety. I do that for my hunter. It's discussed ahead of time. I turn to my hunter and in the dark, I put these in front of his face and then he gives me this back. He knows that I have secured and loaded the gun. It's all safety. I know that he knows that. He scoots into position and position is where he can sit back in a quiet, comfortable chair, not move very much. There's things I do to the chairs. There's things I do inside the blind. I'm not going to bore everybody with every single detail of this, but there's a lot of small little things that happen. But I need him to sit there and be comfortable. If he snores or falls asleep, I'm going to hit him. If I fall asleep, I need him to hit me. It happens every now and then, right? There's, you know, and nobody gets mad if somebody kind of dozes off. I mean, it's lots of work and all this stuff. Anyway, that's fair game. If somebody falls asleep, you tap, right? Now, so he's going to sit there. What I need is for him to be able to sit there. And when I give him the signal, which that signal is I will physically touch him on the back of his shoulder. That is the only, that, that is the time when he can lean in and he can look through his scope. That's the only time I want him to move, is if I touch the back of his shoulder. Now, he may see me get amped up. He may see me doing this. He's got to hold tight. Leopard are hypersensitive to movement. No blind, even under the best circumstances, is, I mean, it's almost like they got x-ray vision, right? So I'm the only one that gets to move until I touch my client on the back of his shoulder. He will move into that gun that I have secured. It is in the right spot. His shooting rest for his elbow is in the right spot. We have dry run this before we left the blind. I know the checkering mark on his gun where I'm going to lock it into the vise. I know all the branches are cleared away. He has a clear target. I know the, 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 I, I just, we've tested everything. I've dug out the holes for his chair. I put a cloth over the, the metal rails. I, everything's done, right? If it's a stainless barrel, I've covered the barrel. Everything's done. Every Everything is done. Attention to detail. Now, all I need for him to do is to be able to lean in and put his arm up. That's the only movement that he will do in a blind. Um, I'm going to tell him, I'm going to give him that signal um, when I know the cat is feeding and the cat is right where I want the cat to be for him to kill him. Not on the ground, not in the tree, not doing cat things. He is standing in the right position to kill that animal. And there's one right position, standing, broadside, doing nothing. That's the position. And if you take, if you, if you don't get in a hurry and you follow these rules, you'll, you'll, well, you'll prevent stitches for everybody, number one, but you will have a higher success rate than getting in a hurt. The worst leopard hunt on earth, in my opinion, is, oh, shit, there's a leopard, there's a, turn on the light, bang, did I get him? That's the worst leopard hunt on planet earth. It, there's a better way to do it. There's a better way to do it, and it just takes preparation and program. Now, so what, what I'm going to tell the client, I have a signal where I'll do like that with my hand, and that means, hey, man, I think something's up. I've heard something. Um, and then if I do that, it's tighten up, but don't move because I'm going to start looking. Now, I may have seen the cat a few minutes before. I'm just getting them a little ready. I may have just heard something behind it. Maybe I heard an elephant. Maybe I saw a snake. But this means be ready because something's fixing to happen, right? Now, the next sign is when I push him in. He knows right where to shoot that cat. I'll go over shot placement in a second. He knows everything. He knows the gun is off safety. He's ready. He does not put his finger into the finger tr trigger guard. It's, it's not allowed. I've had people pull the trigger because they thought it was the right time. That Whatever. We, we don't put our finger. Just don't put your finger on the trigger, right? Because all we can do is screw this up right now. We have it. It's ours. Take your time. Don't get him hurt. I'm going to move him into the gun. The next thing that's going to happen is that cat's going to 
feed for a little bit or he's going to finish whatever he's doing, which is typically feeding, he's going to drop the bait like they do. If you watch cats long enough, they go through a pattern, right? They, they walk into a bait. They look around maybe a minute, maybe two minutes. Then they walk to the tree. Stop again. Listen. Then they climb the tree. When he climbs the tree, he's going to stop at a comfortable place, and he's not going to do anything. He's going to look. He's just going to look. Then he's going to move to the bait. You know why? Because he hasn't noticed any big changes in his environment. He ate the meat last night and the night before. The blind was there the night before. The, the big rumbling thing that dropped us off, it's rumbled through there many times. It's not a threat. He's going to sit there, look around. As long as nobody moves or sneezes or whatever, he's going to go to the meat. I'm going to move my climb team. He's going to put the X on where I tell him, and he's going to be ready. The next thing that will happen is I'm going to say the word shoot. I'm going to verbalize shoot. And at that time, he has two, three, four seconds to put his finger in the trigger guard, squeeze off one round, and be a happy leopard hunter. Cat's in the right position. Cat's not amped up. My client has been looking through the scope for a little bit. Everything's in place. He makes a good shot. Nobody gets scratched. Everybody's happy. Um, and, and, and that's how a successful leopard hunt goes down. So that's the procedure. That's the procedure in the blind. Um, Oh, that's how I do it. I found that works best, right? At this point, there's not a lot of time for extra signals or communication. I'm not messing with RIA stats, and I'm not trying to, I mean, you know, I'm not worried about a spotlight. We're not hauling mattresses around. We've waited to the right time to hunt that cat. So, um, and then, you know, it's, that's it. I mean, it's it, it's it really is a chip shot, right? It's a 62-yard shot off of a dead rest with an elbow prop. I mean, it's a done deal, um, and and it's really exciting. And, and I like the whole process. And that's and that's leopard hunt. So, um, all right. Somebody asked me a question about that. <laughs> uh, Tanks had one, Nathan. I'm ready, Andy. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh... If you're in the blind, and uh, how do you take care of uh, people having to pee and stuff? Our, our typical sit, any more my typical sit is less than three hours. And we, we, most people don't pee. Um, if they have to pee, we have a bottle. And we plan for that, meaning that the guy has a the room and the space to move the chair back, stand up, I'll hand him the bottle, he'll do it, tap it off, set it in the corner, scoot the seat back up. So we do it silently and effectively. Um, if there's any kind of emergency, somebody gets sick or they got to go, you know, it's just, we got to go do something else or, or it's, or, or, you know, it, it, then we just call the hunt. I mean, we just call the hunt, we back out quietly, and we'll come back and hunt the cat again. It's happened to me before. It's happened before. Um, I will say the, um, yeah, our, our average sit, our average sit, I, I've shot them as fast as probably 15 minutes in a blind, meaning that I shut the door on the blind and killed the cat less than 15 minutes. Um, and then, you know, our longest sit, our longest sit is, is, is three hours. Uh, we usually don't have to go much more than that. Okay. Now, the reason I ask is uh, I go on a super hydrate, hydration when I'm in Africa. So basically, I'll drink a bottle of water, pee, drink another bottle of water, pee all day long. So when I go into the blind, I stopped drinking water, but, you know, uh, last time I was in the blind, I still had to go. I did go into a bottle, but that was also for a hyena, not a leopard. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, and that being hydrated is real important, and I'm, I'm with you on that. I, I love it. I, I want clients to stop the truck or to stop the tracking and take a pee, right? I, 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 I like it. That way I, I'm key, I know he's hydrated. Perfect. Now, once we get on to the actual cat, you probably cut back on the water a little bit so you weren't in pain there yeah. in the blind because you're really not going to be sweating. You know, you're with kind of – at that point, the heavy lifting's done. We're, we're, we're down to timing and, and being patient and just hunting at the right time and, 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 and finishing the deal. Uh, do you have a type of scope that you recommend, like 50 millimeter, 45 millimeter for light gathering? So, uh, yeah, there's a whole lot of equipment stuff other than the rifle, right? Um, and, and scope for a leopard hunter is very important. Uh, once again, the gun's going to be used to collect bait before it's going to collect the leopard. So it needs to be a, a gun that is multi-purpose. I do like, you know, three to nine, four to 12. I do like a little bit bigger optical for collecting light. 30 millimeter tubes are better than one inch tubes, of course, for transmission of light. Um, I do like the red dot. I really, really like them almost for anything these days. The, the, the dot is so adjustable. They come on with motion. Um, I do like those. I like I like a heavy crosshair over a thin crosshair. I don't like it when people show up with these super duper sniper scopes that have 14 X's and things that light up in them and things that move and change. We don't need any of that. That confuses the situation. What I need is a good heavy post, uh, variable magnification, lots of light collection, and and, and my client to be able to see the X on that animal, right? I, I don't need all these fancy bells and whistles. It, it leads to problems and, and mix up confusion. Um, things that move on a scope, hate them. Hate them, hate them, hate them for Africa. The only thing that needs to move is the scope cap that you take off and then you gotta get a screwdriver and turn the thing, right? I don't like target turrets for Africa. Uh, I don't like people fiddling with that. If you don't know what your gun does at 200 yards, you hadn't shot enough. In general, I mean, I'm not beating anybody up, but if you don't know what the gun does at 200, 300, 400, um, you know, we haven't shot enough. We don't have time to be turning things around and forgetting to turn them back. Um, so I like simple. I like simple and reliable than, than, than the piece. I switched to a uh, Leopold 3 by 9 uh, VXR 30 millimeter tube red dot for just that reason. That's exactly what I put on our camp 375 that I would give to a leopard hunter if his rifle wasn't cheap. Yeah, I, I, I used the scope my last safari that had the it had a, a BDC reticle in it, but it was based on the power of the scope. Yeah. I was spring buck hunting, forgot to change the power on the scope, made me look stupid. It happens. It happened. So, so I, I got rid of that problem. Um, yeah, I sent four lip holes back to factory and finally got sick of them for breaking on the recoil. The, uh, of the Leopold, you said? Yeah. Um, all right. What, uh, what, uh, all right. Uh, any more questions about the any more questions about the blind or, or the actual uh, killing of the cat? Um, the I guess I didn't talk about shot placement. I mean, I didn't talk about a lot of stuff, right? I I, I really feel that we went over a lot of basic stuff, but also even though it's basic, a lot of times you may or may not think about it, right? I mean, deciding on the area, right? It's a specialized animal. Pick a country, pick an area, pick a pH. Um, those things are way more important than what you pay for the hunt, right? Um, when it comes to leopard and bongo and things like this. Um, the preparation on your part and enjoying the hunt, um, the baiting aspect and what to be prepared for. And I, I, I threw in a lot of personal stuff about how I do it, um, how I bait. And, and I really feel that you know, not everything I do is right, but 
I've done it in many countries and I've done it for a lot of years and I'm very, very intent on learning. I pay very close attention. I analyze a lot of information. I understand animals. I've spent my life watching animals. I've spent my life trying to catch them. So um, I, I really have developed a lot of these things over time and, 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 it, and it works for me, right? Is it gonna work for every area? Do I want you to tell your pH that Nathan said to do this? No, I probably don't want you to tell your pH that Nathan said to do this, but it works. What I'm saying works. I, I, I've, I've had good success with it and, and it, it wasn't, you know, it was a process. It was a process to, to, to develop this kind of uh, procedure and technique. And it's because I made mistakes. It's because uh, things didn't go well, but leopard hunting, the function of meeting time, the function of persistence, but it, it truly is. Uh, you know, they say you hunt a lion with your heart, you hunt an elephant with your feet, you hunt a leopard with your brain. There's no question. You hunt a leopard with your brain. So, um, all right, guys, in general, I am going to um, close this thing up. And uh, in closing, uh, we don't have to hang up when we're done here. We can chat a little more, but it, in closing, um, Thank you very much for participating. Um, I say this at the end of each of these, but uh, participation, participation in stuff like this, participa participation in hunting, uh, participation in traveling to hunt, participation on AH African hunting, which is how we all met. Um, that's what drives our industry. That's what drives the sport of hunting. Um, that's what gets more people interested, right? Um, so I thank you for that. Um, I appreciate your interest and I appreciate your time and attendance here to, to facilitate that. Um, you know, please log on to uh, our website, uh, bulletsafaris.com. Please take a look at what we have there. If I can help anybody answer any questions, um, hit me up. I'm, I, I'm around, I'm available, I'm very, very hands on. Um, I've got excellent. Um, anyway, I've got an excellent team that can answer emails. I've got excellent PHs. I've got a good cook, but but I am hands on and I am available for people to contact me. Um, the other than that, I mean, enjoy it, guys. Uh, enjoy the hunting. Please support African Outfitters. Try to go back after as soon as you can and. Uh, uh, I, I really appreciate it and thanks for attending this meeting. Um, I'm going to go ahead and end the recording here, but uh, thanks a lot, guys. Uh, stay on and, and we can chat when we're done.